Hello and welcome to today's video. This is my final book haul of 2023. These are all of the university books that I have ready for the new semester and also my final semester. And I remember doing a book haul when I first moved to uni. I think it's one of the, I think it is the first video on my page. It felt only right to do the final one. This is the final university book haul that we will ever do. And that is so bittersweet. So I'm gonna miss uni so much, but I also know that it's kind of the beginning of the rest of my life. So it's, it's a very bittersweet moment, but I do want to quickly preface this by saying, in my reading resolutions video, I mentioned how I'm trying not to buy as many books and really tackling my consumption problem with buying books for the sake of buying books. So these do not fit into that category because these are books that I've been told that I need for my course. But after this, there will be no more book purchasing. There are a couple I have on pre-order, like the new Meg Parks and stuff, but these are the final books. So this is this could be my final book haul for a while that I physically buy. So I bought all these um, and I'm so excited to get into them. The first book that we have is The Private Memoirs and Confessions of a Justified Sinner by James Hogg. First of all, this cover is just, is it not giving gothic? This seems a lot to do with religion, like the idea of salvation to me. And I'm also quite sure, however, I've just opened it. What is that font? That is tiny. Again, no idea what this is about, but it does give me religious sense, especially because of the confessions of a justified sinner element. So I'm excited for this one. We then have Zephaloya All The More by Charlotte Dacry. Oh my God, I love reading classics that are written by women because obviously it's not that common, realistically. Obviously there are lots of authors who are women during this period, but it's still not as common as the men. And I'm very excited about this one. It says, this is the final judgment of Satan or Victoria de la Randi, the heroine of Sofloya or the Moor, a tale of lust, betrayal and multiple murder set in Venice in the last days of the 15th century. So if any of you are going to Venice, I feel like this would be the perfect book to read. And the cover of this one is great. And also these are all of the um, Oxford World Classics. I do prefer Penguin Black Classic, but these are always floppier. So you win some, you lose some. Next up, we have a classic author. Okay, a classic. Anne Radcliffe's The Italian. Now, what I'm excited about for this is during my Jane Austen module, we got told um, so much about Anne Radcliffe and how important she was, especially in Northanger Abbey. So I'm very intrigued to go into an actual novel of Anne Radcliffe. This one is a little bit thicker. She's a bit chunkier. The font is smaller. Can you believe it? The font is smaller. Anne Radcliffe, I've heard, is a really, really great Gothic author. And that's something I'm really excited to get my teeth into. I love the Gothic because it always feels so nitty gritty. And as much as I love my cute fantasy romance, I love a little, you know, a fluffy book. Sometimes you just need a book that's going to absolutely be like, <laughs> what is going on? And I do feel like some of the classic Gothic authors do that, like with Frankenstein, you read it and you think, what is going on? Because they, their minds just work in completely different ways. Everything is so new and so nuanced and they are enigmas in themselves. It's just wonderful. So I may become a fully fledged gothic girly after this who knows this is another author and another text that came up a lot in my jane austen module as, as like a reference and that is matthew lewis's the monk this one honestly feels the most <laughs> i don't like the sound of that i get really freaked out by scary stories that are associated to religion i can't think there was a really great film and it was all about like religion and stuff. It's like Midnight Mass, that's all to do with religion. Um, and it freaks me out because it just kind of shows the power of religion and stuff like that. And I find it really interesting. I think this is the one that I'm most nervous to read because again, it seems like the creepiest of the lot, um, which is interesting because I think most people would say that Zafloya seems like the creepiest one. I think the Gothic draws on a lot of the older interpretations of religion and that's why it kind of creeps me out a lot but I love it. Like, I love, love, love it. And then finally, for my gothic literature module, we have Horace Walpole's The Castle of Otranto, another one that came up in my Jane Austen module. So there's a lot, a lot to be said about Jane Austen and the gothic. I think you could really write a great essay on that in case anyone's interested in a topic. But it says here that this is the first supernatural English novel and one of the most influential works of gothic fiction. So this kind of seems to be the innovation, the trendsetter, if you will, for the genre. This one is actually super duper short. Like she is, like if you take the introduction out, she is tiny. Oh my God, no, literally she is so small, but I'm excited about this. Anything to do with a castle, I love. I love books set in castles. I think 
it adds it can either go one of two ways it can be fluffy and light-hearted and very whimsical or it can have like this well the gothic element the i feel unsafe i feel uncomfortable vibe and that is what i'm after those are the five books for the villains of the gothic romantic we're also doing samuel taylor Coleridge as well which if you don't know about me i love samuel taylor Coleridge. i studied christabel in a levels changed the trajectory of my life and that's what we're doing in this we're also going to be studying christabel so expect some exciting uni vlogs on to the irish comic fiction did i think sally rooney was going to be on this yes is she a comedic author no she's just painful the first one that we will be studying is the book of evidence by john banville oh this was short this was shortlisted for the booker prize in the year that taylor swift was born 1989 <laughs> it says it's a wonderfully dark and insightful and unnerving crime novel that takes us deep into the unreliable mind of an improbable murderer Ooh. What? Why is the font so small on all of these? This is such a stiff book too. Like physically, this is stiff and uh, I'm trying to not break the spine, but and the font is tiny, but murder mystery that's not so much a mystery, more just a murder novel. Thrilling. This one, I don't know why I'm so drawn to this. You know what it is? I think it's because it's got a step back cover. I'm a step back cover lover. I love a step back cover um, where the cover is shorter than the first page. So you have this little thing here. I don't know what it is. Really draws me in. Not many people like them, but I'm a fan. This is Milkman by Anna Burns. Oh, and it's the winner of the Dublin Literary Award in 2020. Well done, Anna Burns. In an unnamed city where, where to be interesting is dangerous, an 18-year-old woman has attracted the unavoidable attention of a powerful and frightening older man, Milkman. In this community where suggestions quickly become fact, where gossip and hearsay can lead to terrible consequences, what can she do to stop a rumour once it has started? Again, they all, although this is comic fiction, it does seem like most of them have a really substantial, weighty plot behind them in the comic and the comic is kind of backgrounded which i like i like a book that this year i'm really trying to get into more weighty novels that leave me with thoughts and feelings rather than just reading 100 percent romance i want to read more fiction books like literary fiction and i'm so that's why i'm so happy to be taking this module have good behavior by molly keen the cover i mean this is just a beautiful like physically a beautiful book so this one seems more about families and the familial bonds between a child the father and the mother and the idea that you must stick to some form of societal outlook and be perfect in the eyes of society and how that not only could be the reason why your family is saved from like grace but also the reason for the downfall a really interesting concept and one that is kind of constantly drawn upon in society as we go through it seems to be this idea that it just never ever stops that there is a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things the third policeman by flan o'brien is another one this is a cute little it seems like more of a short novella and this says a murder thriller a hilarious comic satire about an archetypal village police force a surrealistic vision of eternity the story of a tender brief unrequited love affair between a man and his bicycle and a chilling fable of unending guilt that policeman is comparable only to Alice's Adventures in Wonderland as an allegory of the absurd. Oh, so this seems more of like an absurdist novel, which I haven't read many. I did read a portion of Ulysses by James Joyce. Mm -hmm. Never again will that be happening. I hope it's easy to understand, or at least I do understand it. I do find with a lot of absurdist novels that I struggle. Finally, this one came with the cover all bent, but like I just don't have time to send it back because I need to read it. So unfortunately, maybe I should send this. I lost the packing note actually, so it's not gonna happen. Oh well. This is The Devil I Know by Claire Kilroy. We didn't actually have to buy this one. They said it was available online. However, I'm a girlie who likes to annotate her books. So um, I did get it. Okay, so this one seems actually very different. Oh, one of the authors from this has like loved it. But this seems very different from the rest of this pile. This seems to be more about a businessman and the trials and tribulations of being that businessman and what it means to be a businessman. The other ones seem to deal with like murder and family and the idea of the male and the female. But this one, and it also deals with a property development um this cover really is giving like 2005 energy and i don't know why i'm not a fan of the cover but the book itself seems really great we'll see what happens when i get to reading so those are all of the books that i am going to be reading in my final semester of uni hopefully they're good because i really would love to leave on a high note and i'm so sad about having to say that 
that but it's okay so yeah i hope you enjoyed the final university book haul i just want to say thank you to the people who've been here from like day one who saw that video i know it's been up and down and i know i've not been consistent with this channel but i would say since august i've really given it my best go and i've really noticed how much i love it and so you can expect videos from me constantly now like they will be they will be happening it will not be a one every three months type of situation thank you for being here um i hope you have a great 2024 and that was my final book haul of the year, my final uni book haul. And I'll see you guys very soon with a new video.